Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at examples of determining the convergence of P series. Let's get to it. All right, so here's our first example. We want to determine the convergence of this series. We have the sum from n equals one to infinity of one divided by n to the power of four. And so remember that a P series is a series of this form where we have the sum from n equals one to infinity of one divided by n to some power P. And so the terms of the series would look like this, one divided by one to the power of P, then one divided by two to the power of P, and one divided by three to the power of P and so on. And so if we look at our series here, we can see that we have a P series where P is equal to four. We have one divided by N to the power of four. And so we know that P is equal to four, but what does that tell us about the convergence of this P series? Well, remember, the convergence of a P series is based on the value of P. If we have a P series, it will converge if P is greater than one, but it will diverge if P is less than or equal to one. And so for this example, P is equal to four, and that is greater than one, which means that this P series will converge. And so that is the solution to this example. We know that this P series converges. Okay, let's look at another example. All right, so here's our next example. Once again, we want to determine the convergence of this series. In this case, we have the sum from n equals one to infinity of n to the power of negative pi. And now at first glance, this doesn't look like a series that is in the form of a P series, but if we manipulate it just a little bit, you will see that it is a P series. In this case, we have n to the negative power of pi. If we make that exponent positive by moving this value to the denominator, the series will look like this. We'll have the sum from n equals one to infinity of one divided by n to the positive power of pi, right? Moving this value to the denominator makes that exponent positive. And so now we have one divided by n to the power of pi. And so we have a series that is in the form of a P series. In this case, P will be equal to pi since pi is the power of n in the denominator. And so if P is equal to pi, is that greater than one? Well, we know that pi is approximately equal to 3.1415 and some more decimals. And so 3.14 is greater than one. And so pi is greater than one, which means that this P series will converge. And so for this example, we can conclude that our series converges. All right, let's look at another example. So next up, we want to determine the convergence of this series. We have the sum from n equals one to infinity of one divided by 10 times the fourth root of n. All right, now at first, it may not seem like this series is in the form of a P series because n doesn't seem to be raised to a power. Instead, we have the fourth root of n, but it actually is still raised to a power, right? The fourth root of a value is actually the same as taking that value to the one fourth power. Just like the square root of a value is equal to that value to the one half power, the fourth root of a value is equal to that value to the one fourth power. And so we could rewrite our series to be the sum from n equals one to infinity of one divided by 10 times n to the one fourth power, okay? And so now we have a series that more closely resembles the form of a P series. The only thing that looks a little bit different is this 10 in the denominator. But we don't actually need to worry about that constant multiple. In this case, it would be 1 10th is our constant multiple. That's not going to affect the convergence of the P series because we could actually pull that constant multiple out, right? We could say that this series is equal to the sum from n equals one to infinity of 1 10th times one divided by n to the one fourth power. And then we could pull that one tenth out to the front of the series and have that this is equal to one tenth times the sum from n equals one to infinity of one divided by n to the one fourth power. Okay, so one tenth doesn't have any n's in it. And so it's not affected by the summation. So we can just pull that out to the outside. And now we have a P series multiplied by one tenth. Okay, so that one tenth or that 10 in the denominator does not affect the convergence of this series. Now we do have a P series here. We have one divided by N to the power of one fourth. And so P is equal to one fourth, and that is less than one, all right? So since the value of P is not greater than one, but it is less than one, 
that means that the series diverges. All right, so in this case, this p-series diverges. In order for a p-series to converge, the value of p needs to be greater than one. All right, here's our next example. Once again, we want to determine the convergence of this series and we have the sum from n equals one to infinity of two divided by the square root of n to the power of pi. And so at first, this series doesn't really look like a P series, but it is. Remember from the previous example that I said that we could rewrite a square root to be the one half power of the value inside that square root. And so we could rewrite this series to look like this. We'll have the sum from n equals one to infinity of two divided by n to the power of pi to the one half power, right? That is the same as taking the square root of n to the power of pi. But now remember, when you have a value raised to an exponent and that is raised to an exponent, you can rewrite that by multiplying those exponents. So we can multiply pi by one half and have an exponent of pi divided by two. So this would be equal to the sum from n equals one to infinity of two divided by n to the power of pi divided by two. All right, so rewriting our series in this way now allows us to see that it is a p series where the value of p is pi divided by two, right? So p is equal to pi divided by two. And just note that this value of two in the numerator is not going to affect the convergence of this p series. Just like we pulled out one tenth in the previous example, we could pull this two out to the front of the series. So we could rewrite it to look like this. We would have one in the numerator and then two on the outside of our series. And this would still be equal to our original series. All right, so this two does not affect the convergence in any way, okay? And so all we have to do is look at our value of p, which is pi divided by two, okay? This is in the form of a p series. We have one divided by n to some power, which is pi divided by two. Now pi divided by two is approximately equal to 1.57 and some more decimals. And so pi divided by two is greater than one, right? 1.57 is greater than one. And so we can conclude that this P series converges since the value of P is greater than one and not less than or equal to one. So this series converges. Okay, next up we want to determine the convergence of this series. We have the sum from n equals one to infinity of eight times n to the power of negative 1.02. Now this series does not look like a P series at first, but when you have a negative exponent, you can always make that positive by moving that value to the denominator, right? We can move n to the power of negative 1.02 to the denominator and have n to the power of positive 1.02. And so if we do that, this will be equal to the sum from n equals one to infinity of eight divided by n to the power of 1.02. That power is now positive, okay? And so now we can see that this series is in the form of a P series we have a constant divided by n to some power. Now, if you wanted to, you could pull this eight out to the front of the series. It doesn't matter. That constant multiple of eight does not affect the convergence of the P series. And so let's just ignore that. We know that P is equal to 1.02, and that is greater than one. It's not greater than one by a lot, but it is greater than one. It is 0.02 greater than one. And so since the value of p for our p series is greater than one, we know that this series converges. And so we will say that this series converges. That is our final answer. All right, so here we have a slightly different example. This time we want to write the series and determine its convergence for the following. And so we have an infinite sum of terms that we will be able to rewrite as a series. Okay, and so if we want to do that, if we want to write a series to represent these terms, what we need to do is first find an nth term to represent each of these terms, right? We need to find a sub n. And so we know that our first term is a sub one, our second term is a sub two, our third term is a sub three, and then we have a sub four and a sub five and so on. And so what pattern can we notice between the value of n for each of these terms and the value of each of the terms? Well, the first term doesn't tell us much. When n equals one, our term is one. And so let's look ahead to the rest of our terms. 
when n equals 2, we have 1 divided by the cubed root of 4. And then for the next term, when n equals 3, we have 1 divided by the cube root of 9. Then for our next term, when n equals 4, we have 1 divided by the cubed root of 16. And then for the last term that we're given, when n equals 5, we have 1 divided by the cubed root of 25. All right, so the pattern I'm seeing so far is that we at least have 1 divided by the cubed root of some value for each term. And so, so far I can say that the nth term is going to be equal to 1 divided by the cubed root of some value, but we don't quite know what that value is yet. However, there is a pretty simple pattern that we can recognize here. When n equals 2, that value is 4. When n equals 3, that value is 9. When n equals 4, that value is 16 and when n equals 5, that value is 25. If you're familiar with the squares of 2, 3, 4, and 5, you probably noticed by now that 4 is 2 squared, 9 is 3 squared, 16 is 4 squared, and 25 is 5 squared. So it's pretty safe to say that that value that we're taking the cubed root of is n squared. Whatever the value of n is, squared. So I'll add that to our nth term. We have the cubed root of n squared. And just to make sure that that checks out for our first term, when n equals 1, we have 1 squared, which is 1. The cubed root of 1 is 1, and 1 divided by 1 is 1. All right, so everything works out, and so this is the nth term for this series. And so now that we have the nth term, we know that the series will look like this. We'll have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 divided by the cubed root of n squared. And now we have a series that is a p-series with a little bit of manipulation that we can determine the convergence of, right? We have one divided by the cubed root of n squared, and we can rewrite a cubed root as taking that value to the one-third power, right? This series could be rewritten to be the sum from n equals one to infinity of one divided by n squared to the one-third power. Taking a value to the one-third power is the same as the cubed root of that value. And so now we have a value raised to an exponent and that whole value is raised to an exponent. And so we can simplify this by multiplying those exponents together. So two times one-third is two-thirds. And so we would have n to the power of two-thirds. And so this is equal to the sum from n equals one to infinity of one divided by n to the power of two-thirds. And now we have a series that is in the form of a p-series where p is equal to two-thirds, right? We have one divided by n raised to a power, and that power is two-thirds. And so p is equal to two-thirds, and that is less than one. It's not greater than one because three-thirds is equal to one, and so two-thirds is less than that. And so since our value of p is less than one, this p-series is going to diverge. All right, so this was a series that represented these terms, and we found that that series diverges. Let's look at one more example for this video. All right, so here's our last example. It's similar to the previous example we just looked at. We want to write the series and determine its convergence for the following. And so we have another infinite sum of some terms. And so once again, we want to find the nth term, a sub n, to represent these terms for our series. And so one is a sub one, our next term is a sub two, then we have a sub three, a sub four, a sub five, and so on. And so what we wanna to do to write our nth term is find a pattern between the value of n for each of our terms and the value of those terms. Now, once again, the first term doesn't really tell us much because it's just one. And so we wanna look at the rest of our terms. And so for a sub two, we have one divided by four times the fourth root of two. Then for a sub three, we have one divided by nine times the fourth root of three. Then for a sub four, we have one divided by 16 times the fourth root of four. And then for a sub five, we have one divided by 25 times the fourth root of five. Now, right off the bat, we can see that every single one of these terms has one divided by some value times the fourth root of another value, right? So, so far we know that our nth term is going to be one divided by some value times the fourth root of another value. And so that value inside the fourth root seems to match the value of n, right? When n is equal to two, that value is two. When n equals three, 
that value is 3. When n equals 4, it's 4. And when n equals 5, it's 5. And so it's safe to assume that we have the fourth root of n in our denominator. But what about the value being multiplied by that fourth root? Well, we have a similar pattern to what we found in the previous example. When n equals 2, we have 4. When n equals 3, we have 9. When n equals 4, we have 16. And when n equals 5, we have 25. And so each of those values is just the value of n squared. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25. So we can write n squared as that value for our nth term. Okay, and then you just want to check to make sure that this still applies for a sub 1 when n equals 1. And so if n is 1, 1 squared is 1 times the fourth root of 1, which is 1. So 1 times 1 is 1 and one divided by one is one. All right, so that checks out. And so this is the nth term that represents this series of terms, okay? And so our series will look like this. We'll have the sum from n equals one to infinity of one divided by n squared times the fourth root of n. All right, now we can rewrite the fourth root of n to be n to the one fourth power. So this is equal to the sum from n equals one to infinity of one divided by n squared times n to the one fourth power. And when you are multiplying like bases with exponents, you add the exponents, right? x squared times x to the third power is equal to x to the fifth power because we add two and three to get five. And so we would do the same here for n, right? We would add two and one fourth, all right? And so what is two plus one fourth? Well, two would be eight fourths, right? So if we have two plus one fourth, that is equal to 8 fourths plus 1 fourth, which is equal to 9 fourths. And so we could rewrite our series to be equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 divided by n to the 9 fourths power. And so we now have a series that we can recognize as a p-series. We have 1 divided by n to some power, and that power is 9 fourths. And so p is equal to 9 fourths, and that is greater than one, right? To get that power, we had two plus one fourth, so that's obviously going to be greater than one. But if you were not sure, nine divided by four is 2.25, and that is greater than one. And so since our value of p is greater than one, we can conclude that this p-series converges. And so that is our final answer. This is our simplified p-series that represents these terms you could also say that this is your p-series as well. It doesn't matter. Both of these are the same p-series, and we have found that that series converges. Okay, and so that is the final solution to this example, and this was the last example for this video. Okay, and so if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.